On April 15, 2013, two bombs exploded during the Boston Marathon, killing three people and injuring 264 others. For the next three days, investigators reportedly used a high-tech system called BriefCam to analyze local surveillance video. Hours of video are condensed into minutes and experts can zoom in on suspicious actions, like a backpack being left behind. BriefCam's video synopsis was instrumental in identifying the two bombers, and the technology was made in Israel. Technology is going to change all of our lives. It already has, and what's coming down the pike is going to be even more intense. Israel has often been called the startup nation, and while Jerusalem may be the spiritual heart of the country, Tel Aviv is the center of its startup success. Just a century ago, this thriving city was little more than a series of sand dunes. Today, it's been voted the second best high-tech center in the world, just after Silicon Valley. Israel was recently ranked the fourth most innovative nation in the world, from the iPhone to the PlayStation. Many of the ideas behind your favorite gadgets came from inventors right here in Israel. Flip-top cell phones, keyboards for smartphones, Intel Pentium chips, the ability to print straight from your computer, the flash drive, the chip in the iPad, the OS that runs the Amazon Kindle, the chip that controls the Sony PlayStation, and the 3D sensor in the Xbox Connect. Every year, American companies are shelling out more and more shekels to buy small Israeli startups. The latest example is Waze, an Israeli smartphone app that gives live traffic reports based on your location. It warns users about traffic jams, accidents, and even sitting police cars. In 2011, Waze made headlines by helping drivers navigate the LA traffic jam known as Carmageddon. Two years later, Google bought the program for just under a billion dollars, making it the most expensive app in history. I think the key challenge for Israeli companies now is to go from startup nation to scale-up nation. We need to build bigger companies, not just sell them early to American multinationals, but to actually get them bigger, to get them into the sales process, and to create more jobs both here and in America and around the world. So what gives Israel its technological edge? We asked some of the country's most prominent business leaders, and the answer is, there's no single answer. Chutzpah is perhaps the most definitive Jewish word. Very, very hard to translate. Gall, unrelenting daring, this ability to try to do something which nobody else has done before, to say something which is a little bit out of place, to be in someone's face. That chutzpah is what allows us to actually break the boundaries and to break the rules and to go out of our comfort zone in order to create new things. There's a joke about what is the Jewish answer? It's a question, right? In other words, the Jews will answer a question with a question. That culture of challenging and debating and arguing, it's everywhere in Israel. Arguing is healthy because you get to better answers, you get to better results. And I think that is a key uh, cultural attribute in Israel's economic success story and its economic miracle. Our roots, our education, maybe even that it's coming from the Talmud, is always being skeptical in asking questions. And I believe uh, this tradition, this culture, it's a part of our DNA. Whether you call it the Socratic method or the Talmudic method, you choose it. That's a big part of how we learn and how we teach our kids. If you were looking for a single group to basically make your ideal pool of entrepreneurs, you couldn't look for a better group than immigrants. Immigrants make great entrepreneurs because they already did it in their own lives. They were the CEO of mylife.com. They took risk, they moved to a foreign country, they had to handle legal and facilities and HR to get jobs and banking and marketing, and they basically had to scale up innovation. 
has a direct correlation to diversity. If you all think alike, and you all act alike, I'm sorry, it's not going to be a particularly creative place. In Jewish life, parents always advocated to the kid that he has to learn and also that he has to venture if you want to succeed. I always say that the secret source of the Israeli high tech is the Jewish mother who asked her son at the age of seven, after all what we have done for you, asking you for one Nobel Prize, is it really too much? Yossi Vardi is known as the godfather of Israel's high tech industry. He's invested in more than 80 internet startups, including a company started by his son. Came with three of his friends. I gave them the money. I didn't have much of an idea what they're going to do. <coughs> but still, I, I gave them the money. They created this unbelievable uh, product. And uh, the rest is history, as, uh, as they say. That unbelievable product was ICQ, the world's first instant messaging service. Less than a year later, America Online bought the company for $400 million. Very hard to extract the DNA of uh, success. You have to understand if you venture, you cannot do only successes, because if you are trying to be involved in area where there are only successes, you are not taking risks. So failure, comes with the territory. Failure is not a four-letter word. The last time I looked, failure is part of the process. Not every team wins every game, but you got to try, and if you fail, you got to learn from your uh, mistakes and then pick yourself up and do it right again. Are the failure rates lower in Israel than they are in the rest of the world? And they're not. Israelis don't fail any less. The difference is they just keep trying. People don't understand, for example, if you're presented the choice of investing in two entrepreneurs, one who's actually never tried it before, one who's tried and failed, always take the guy who has tried and failed. Your statistical odds of getting a return on your investment are far better with that person. If you're looking for the next generation of high-tech success stories in Israel, you won't find them in business school. In most job interviews here, the big question isn't where you went to college, but where you served in the military. When I get a resume, the first thing I look at is what did this kid do in the Army? I don't look at the university, I look at the Army unit, because that's gonna tell me a lot about who that person is. In Israel, almost every single Israeli serves in the military. Almost every single Israeli is put through this training in how to lead, how to manage, how to make very difficult decisions with very little information under enormous pressure. And these skills hardwire young people for being entrepreneurs and launching and running or helping to run startups. We give the chance for every soldier to express himself and to say what he really believes without punishing him because his rank is a lower rank. So I have to tell you that sometimes listening to these officers, they raise a lot of stupid ideas in my point of view, 40, 50, 60%, but 20, 30, 40% are wonderful ideas. Once they're out of the army, soldiers take the same skills they've learned tracking terrorists and use them to make life safer for civilians. Israelis have developed everything from bomb-sniffing mice to software that prevents identity theft to a scanner that lets you keep your shoes on during security checks at the airport. Many Israeli IT companies are founded by alumni of an elite military intelligence unit known as 8200, a highly secretive group that specializes in cyber warfare. Unit 8200 is believed to be the brains behind the Stuxnet virus that targeted Iran's nuclear facilities. In my company, uh, in the R&D team, 80% of the uh, engineers are coming from Unit 8200. Major General Aharon Farkash was the commander of Unit 8200 for four years. And when he retired from the Army, 
He used that experience to help design a security system known as SafeRise, a virtual doorman that uses both voice and facial recognition to protect offices and apartment buildings. Welcome to FST. Israelis are proud to say that many of their high-tech ideas come from their experience in the Army, an idea some say could also benefit American companies. American businesses have a lot to learn with how Israel has integrated their military people when they're coming out of the military into the economy. It's really got to be part, I think, of everybody's culture. And certainly the heroes who are coming back in America from Iraq and from Afghanistan, they need to be the first guys to get the jobs because they have actually taken leadership and led, and they're the kind of people who you want to hire 